Hey guys, it's Tim. Welcome back to my video series on Meraki and the Campus. In this video, I'll show you how to configure OSPF on a Meraki switch stack, and then how do we integrate that into a already existing OSPF network. So first, in this lab, you can see I've built out a core switch stack with MS425s running layer three interfaces, and then we have a traditional Cisco network in place with OSPF. So first thing we're going to do is create point-to-point -point links between the 425s and the uh, Cisco network, and then we'll configure OSPF and then validate our configuration. So first, let's go ahead and create our point-to-point -point interfaces. So we're going to go ahead and hit Add Interface, call this VLAN 12 to DC 172.17.12.0, and this side we're going to be 12.1. On the Cisco side, it is .5. Call this VLAN 12, save and add other, VLAN 13 to DC 1. Okay, so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and configure OSPF. So go to switch, OSPF routing, go ahead and hit enable, and then we're going to be in area 0. And area zero is typically your backbone area. What we're going to do is we're going to enable these two point-to-point -point interfaces, and we're going to say that they can advertise uh, OSPF over their links. And then we're going to take the other interfaces on the switch, and we're going to enable them to be part of the OSPF network. So we're going to advertise them, but they're not going to actively pass OSPF advertisements out their interface. Okay, and then finally, we're going to redistribute our OSPF, our default route out into OSPF. So go ahead and hit save changes. And then what we need to do is apply our switch ports into the point to point VLANs. So first, we're going to look for port one. Sorry, port three. We can see here is CCIE Tim Core Switch One. That's going to be in VLAN 12. And VLAN 13 update. Okay, so now we're going to give the network a second here just to catch up with us. And while we're doing that, I'm going to go ahead and log into our Cisco core. And we're going to ping those links. So we'll do ping. And we're successful. And then the next thing we're going to do is just check and see if OSPF is up. And we can see that we're still walking through the OSPF neighbor process here. So we'll go ahead and give this a second. We're exchanging our databases. And now we fully have sent over our OSPF table. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you here that on the data center side, These are the networks that we are advertising into OSPF. So these should show up on the Meraki switch routing table. So let's jump over to the switch here. We'll go to uh, switches. We'll click on switch one. We'll go to the routing table. And we can see that we have these routes now in our routing table. We'll jump back over to the Cisco switch. And we can see that we now have the advertisements from the campus side and we have our default route. So as you can see, pretty simple to set up OSPF between a Meraki network and a traditional OSPF network. So to bring it all together in our video series, we built 425 core. We created our VLAN interfaces, set up our spanning tree topology, and then next we configured our MS350 in the closet, 
and we put this in a stack as well as we finally configured everything in an OSPF area zero and advertise the networks from the Cisco uh, data center into the Meraki campus and vice versa. So hopefully you found these videos informative. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions uh, in the comment section and I will follow up with you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.